you. So my name is Dan Laird. I'm with Campus Technology Services, and I am the administrator for the Panopto uh, Recording Management Service on campus. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you today is the, the captioning portion of that. So uh, if you have Panopto set up in your Blackboard course, uh, you you, if you've done this already, you know that once you complete a recording in Panopto, you can automatically upload it to the course in Blackboard that you have set up. Once you do that, captioning is automatically applied to each video that you upload to the Panopto folder. So I'm going to cover um, kind of that process, how it works. I'm also going to show you where to go to edit your captions. And I'm also going to show you where you can go to download the caption file if you care to take your video out of Panopto and put it into a different service, say you wanted to put uh, your videos in YouTube for whatever reason, uh, you could download uh, your videos and you could take the caption file with you as well. So those are some of the key points I'm going to go over and let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. One. Okay, so this should be my, you know, this is my Blackboard course, and this is what my Panopto folder looks like in there. So let me refresh this because I just added another video. Okay, let me go to my folder. So I um, have this uh, demo video that I did a few minutes ago. And you can see in here, um, there's a small closed captioning icon next to the video. This will appear after the captions have been applied to the video. Um, if it's a longer video, say you had an hour class and you uploaded, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. This was a 30 second video. so. Captioning for sh short ones usually are done within five minutes. So, so that's kind of when you do a video in Panopto and upload it, that's kind of the process that goes on in order for those captions to be applied. You can also upload videos to Panopto that weren't created with the Panopto recorder. So if you have, let's say videos you created in any other uh, platform of yourself speaking, or if you have videos that are just class materials that you normally share with your students in Blackboard, um, any video um, can be uploaded to Panopto and captions will be applied to it. So I'm just going to show you that process real quick. So in your, uh, in your Blackboard course, you click on this Create button and you can go to Upload Media. So this will open this window and you can click here and it will go to your uh, computer and you can grab whatever video you want that's on your computer to upload. This is one I created today. So that is being uploaded. And that's uh, the uploads complete. So once you take a video and upload it to Panopto, you can see that it's processing. So after the video uh, gets on the Panopto servers, it goes through some video processing and then has some captions being processed automatically. And then um, in a few minutes, uh, you'll get a video, or I'm sorry, you'll get an email that says uh, when your, uh, the processing of your, your file is complete. So you don't have to wait around and stare at this if you don't want to. Um, so while we're waiting for that to be published, I'm going to show you what the captions look like in uh, this video. Uh, before I do that, does anybody have any questions before I keep going about the publishing process? Okay. Well, I have a quick, uh, actually, you may not uh, want to When you this mouse one. over the uh, video, the settings button will show up in here. 
you can go to the captions menu and this will show you um, the caption file that's been created. It's titled English because that's the language that I have it captioning for. So just so you know, this is where the caption file resides. If you want to edit the captions, you click on the edit button and this will open the video editor that uh, Panopto has automatically online built into the service. So you'll see a timeline of my video with my um, the video of me talking along with the audio track. If you go over to the captions menu on the left, this shows uh, the captions um, that were generated for this. So if I hit play, it will, you can listen to your video and you can kind of go through the captions to make sure that they're correct. Um, this does a pretty good job. It, um, it will take the beginning of each sentence and capitalize uh, the first letter and will also attempt to do punctuation. So it'll try to put in um, periods and commas where it thinks it's appropriate. And it does a fairly good job, but you still have to go through and make some corrections. So say if I wanted to go in here and correct this, you just click on where you want the correction to go. Say it forgot my last name and I hit enter. That's all you need to do to edit that caption. Now, after you get done editing the captions, you also need to click apply after you've made your changes. So it'll say applying changes and ask me if it wants to close the editor and I say, okay. So it'll open up the file with the, the new captions applied. So that is how you edit the captions that Panopto has automatically created for you. Does anybody have any questions about editing captions in Panopto? It's a pretty simple process. The editor is pretty straightforward. You just click on the section that you want to go to. Let me click on edit again. So I just click where I want to make changes and make the changes and then click apply when I'm done. So. Okay, so let me see if my captions are done for my latest file. Let me refresh my screen. Go to the right folder. It doesn't look like they're yet, there yet. But so this is what it'll, there, there's no um, closed caption icon there yet. So those aren't done, but they will be eventually. So you can do captioning with both the videos you create in Panopto and the ones that you upload. So just to demonstrate that portion of this. Uh, does anybody, that that's it in a nutshell. This really doesn't have to be a 50 minute presentation because it's, it's very simple using this with Panopto. And you just need to make sure that you have a Panopto account in Blackboard. And then um, the videos that you create in Panopto are automatically uploaded. And then anything that you want outside of Panopto, you can upload yourself through the interface in Blackboard. Um, did anybody have any questions about the process? And there's a question in the chat about um, knowing how to download or share with others, including the captions from Panopto. How to download the caption file? I think maybe the video with the captions. Right. I'd like to know how to do the video and the captions because I need to share some of my files with other professors. Uh, you, the, it's a separate process. Um, you have to 
the video doesn't come with captions because because they're two separate files. It's a common misconception that you know the video just has captions imprinted on it. They're they're two different things. So so if um, I I can see that you found the file separately, but when you download it, then do, it it doesn't show it the way that it does in Panopto, where it highlights what's being said as it's going through the no. video. You have to upload uh, the video to another video service like YouTube in order for it to be able to ingest the uh, caption file and play it along with the video. Is it possible, you know, if I'm like I course share sometimes um, with other people who are also teaching the same course, if I do that within Blackboard, if they have Panopto set up in their Blackboard, and I'm course sharing materials, does it automatically? Yeah, if you, you can copy link, uh, videos from one uh, folder to another. And when you do so, it will bring the captioning file with it. It will, okay. So even if I'm doing a video that I created last fall, it would bring that file with it. Correct. And if you wanted to say you wanted to share this video outside of Blackboard for whatever purpose, say you wanted to give it to a colleague or put it on a website, you can do that in the uh, Panopto interface. So you don't have to download both files and put it into something else. Um, How do you for do instance, that? I will show you. Um, the reason I'm asking is I've created an orientation video for prospective teachers. And another okay. professor wants to share it with his students, but he doesn't really use Blackboard. So he said, oh, I'm just going to okay. share it through Google. But I'm wondering if how he's going to do that. That's, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. Um, so once you're in Panopto and you go to the video that you would like to share, mm -hmm. uh, you mouse over it and click on the share button. So. There is something that you have to keep in mind. Um, if it's a video you don't mind is shared, you know, if you share a video, then whoever has the link can, can keep on sharing it. So if it's something that you want to remain with the students in your course, then you have to keep it within this folder. But if you don't mind, you know, sharing it as a public link, then this is the easiest way to go about doing things. So. Uh, is, is the video that you share, do you mind if that, that link is shared, you know? Um, probably how much not, security but there are do you some want other on ones. It? Well, there are other ones that I created that I do want more security on. I don't want them outside of the course, but I do want other people who are teaching the same course to be able to use it. Does that make sense? Well, if you want other people to be able to use it that are using the course, then um, they would have to it would have to be set up with uh, Panopto and Blackboard. You, you wouldn't be able to share the link out because once you create a public link, then while they can use that in you know Google Classroom or send out in an email, um, that makes it public. So you have to keep that in mind when you do the share function. Okay. You good can too. restrict it to anybody in your organization, and I believe it will bring up a prompt for them to log in, but it gets kind of convoluted when you start doing that so so you wouldn't advise just saying only SUNY Oswego people can access this um I don't have much experience using links in that manner so I'm not sure how they work outside of your course and that would be something that we'd have to test to see what the behavior would be um normally when we share videos we do it within the system and we don't need to change the permissions because once you uh, copy a course over to another folder, it automatically applies the correct permissions. So the people that are in the class that has that folder are automatically able to view it and it just takes care of itself. So that's kind of the way we've done it. But if it's something that you want to explore, we can we can test it out and work on it. But I'm just telling you how we how things normally work. But okay, we're always welcome to trying new things and seeing how they right. work. So. So here you're just creating a link then that I would share with right. folks. Yeah, like that's just a link that you could email to somebody and they could paste it wherever they, you know, want to share it with their students, so. 
There's also and embed I'd... code, right, Dan? What's that? There's embed code too, right? Right. Yeah, there's uh, embed code that you can use in web pages. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you can either go with the link. It's up here. You can get the link or the embed code. Say if this is something that you wanted to put into like a Google site or something that had HTML, then you could put in, you know, how you want it to look and then it would generate code and you could copy it. So, but it sounds like you just want to You're it, beyond so. my wheelhouse at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, for anybody listening or on the recording or right now, um, if you want to um, take a video that has, um, that's in Panopto, you can embed it into a web page. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that helps you, Debbie. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I needed. Thank you. Okay. So just to uh, go over that again, and I'll show you. Um, so it, say you wanted to download the video out of Panopto with the captioning file. Well, they're both separate files, but if you wanted to download both, um, you go to this output menu within the manage and there's a, it has video podcasts and by default, uh, the video has your screen capture in the background and then your, your talking head down the corner. Um, if that's if you're happy with that format, you can just click download podcast and that will download the video to your computer. Um, you can change the way it looks. And if then you want. where's your caption file? I, I'll get to that in a second. So if you want um, it to look differently, say you just want the you talking, or if you want just the screen capture, then um, you can select those and then click uh, apply. And it'll take a few seconds for it to re-process uh, the file, but I'm just letting you know that you can download this in different ways if you want. So that's how you get the video out of Panopto. If you wanna get the caption file, you go to captions and you click on, it says available captions, here are the, uh, the English file that it automatically generates. So there'll be, if you've made edits, there'll be the download file, which is the file that you have edited. So that has all your corrections. Um, if for whatever reason you wanted the original um, unedited caption file, that's available too. So you click download file and that would give you the, the SRT text generated um, caption file, save that to your computer, and then you can upload that to any other video service that is able to ingest captions and it will automatically sync it with the video because there's timestamps within it. So, so that's how the downloads work. Do we have more questions in the chat? Yeah, Dan, I, I was, um, Presumably, well, okay, I sometimes make a Zoom recording. I mean, I sometimes do something in Zoom, but oftentimes um, a whole bunch of different files come up. Like one has an A extension and one has, could you offhand which one I should upload? If you don't know offhand, that's not a big deal. But I guess the real important question is, once I upload that to my class recording site, will the captions pretty much work the same way so that I can edit them and do them the same way? Right. So you're, you're talking about when you download files out of Zoom? Right. Like cause what I do is when I record my Zoom session to record to the cloud, mm -hmm. and then I go to Panopt, and then I go into Zoom, but there's a whole bunch of different. Um, yeah, you get more than one file that you can download in Zoom. So I, I know what you're talking about. The I believe it's an uh, M4A file. That's the that's, audio file, Dan. Yeah, that's, there's an MP4 yeah, that's, the that's audio the only. And then it has an MP4, which is the video and audio. So the so if I do the MP4, that will automatically get both the audio and the video? Yep. Okay, thanks. And then, no problem. If for whatever reason you want to use the caption file from Zoom instead of the one from Panopto, you can download that one and upload it to Panopto. That's up to you, but I would probably, if no, you haven't seems, made edits. 
it seems to so make sense to edit it in Panopto, right? Yeah, yeah, That's I would definitely go that route. That would be much easier. So I would just take your MP4, upload it, and then after the caption file is generated in Panopto, um, edit it in here. So. All right. Rebecca, um, I'm not sure what you meant when you said you only get a. Yeah, well, I, you have to record to the cloud in order to get it into Panopto, don't you? No, you can download, you can record to your computer. No, I, okay, I usually record to the cloud, but thank you. Especially because I'm at a classroom, so I don't want to record it to the classroom computer. Okay. All right. Um, does anybody have any other questions about? I just the have a process? quick question. Does it really yeah. matter if you're recording and making it a Panopto recording versus a Zoom recording that you then upload into Panopto? Um, I mean, the, the main difference is between using Zoom and Panopto. Zoom is more for synchronous learning when you're, you know, doing in uh, real time class with students interacting with um, your session. Uh, Panopto is more adept at being able to be something that you record, upload, and then have students watch. Uh, it doesn't have a very good like webinar setup. It, you can broadcast it live, but it doesn't have a good way for students to interact with it. So, Okay, because um, I've only used Panopto when I'm on campus, but at home, I feel like it's going to be more challenging for me to do a Panopto recording because I'm really not set up to do that. So I've just been doing Zoom recordings and uploading them. Okay. Um, what? I, well, we can talk offline if you want. I'm just curious. What do you mean you're not set up to record to Panopto? Do you have an account set up? I, I do have Panopto set up for when I was on campus, but then I thought when I attended the session the other day, you were saying it's better to not use your laptop uh, camera and to have a better microphone and that sort of thing. And I well, don't have that. I, I mean, if it's, I mean, you can test it and then watch the results and see if they work for you. I mean, um, it's always nice to have good equipment to uh, make uh, good quality videos, but I mean, if you're just stuck with what you're working with at home, a lot of us just have web, like your normal everyday webcam. That's what I'm using right now. And, you know, it comes out fine. So it's, it's up to you. Um, I, I think that a lot of people do recordings at home with just, you know, even the integrated um, microphone and video in their laptops. And it's, it serves its purpose. It's not, you know, professional studio quality. <laughs> Um, production, but I mean, if people can hear it and the captioning is done, um, you know, it's it serves its purpose. So it's up to you. I mean, you can do a couple of test videos and see how they sound, and if you're happy with it, you can start going that route. It's up to you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. I mean, right now at home, I have a it's just a Microsoft webcam that I bought for fifty bucks like ten years ago. So. And I have nothing but my laptop at home. So that's why. And, yeah. you know, I don't have a USB. Is that what you're on right now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you sound fine to me. And your yeah, video the auto is good. good. Yeah. Oh, good to know. Thanks. Yeah, no, it really is. For an integrated mic, that you sound good. So it's clear. Dan, Mohammed had a question. Um, do we have in-class mic to have good quality recording? Do we have microphones in the classrooms? Is that the question? It doesn't specifically say that. So I don't know if Muhammad, if you want to um, chime in and clarify your question. Yes. Microphones in the classroom. Okay. <laughs> so there are in the lecture halls on campus, the lapel mics that are normally on the podium, those are integrated into the computer so that um, when you speak into it, it's recording. So if you're, I mean, not everybody's using a lecture hall room, but the ones that have the lapel mics will automatically grab the audio from that. Every other room that has um, a camera and microphone set up, it's, it's actually what I have at home. It's a, a webcam that is uh, mounted on the ceiling. So um, 
lots of people use them. Um, it's the quality depends on what room you're in and kind of the uh, HVAC situation and how close it is to the the projector because you can get background noise from um, the heating system and you can get background noise from the fan and the projector. We try when we um, install these, we try to make sure that, you know, we do testing when we install these in the classroom to try to minimize the effects of the room noise. Um, so there are rooms that are better on campus than others. Um, you kind of have to test them out uh, to find out which room works best for you. Um, I would, if I were you and you had a room in mind, I would um, try it out and then see what the results are and then uh, work from there. Uh, you might be able to get a different room if it's not up to um, what you would like it to be. But a, a, a lot of people use them and uh, are fine with the results from it. If I can add, because I'm one who's been in that situation. I was going to say, you would, you know. Um, a few, some of the classrooms on campus also have portable mics. And I find that they definitely do help. Um, it depends on the size of the room and the configuration of the room. I know you probably don't teach in Rich Hall, but I've taught in room 118 Rich in Rich. and. Uh, I'm not sure about all the rooms, but it seems as though CTS has done a pretty good job at whatever classroom does not pick up sound well from the ceiling mic. They put a portable mic, you know, one that you can clip onto your shirt in there. Yeah. Yeah. If, if say you were assigned to a classroom and that's the only room you could use and you weren't happy with the results, like Steve said, you can just give us a call and um, our audio uh, people can work with you to uh, set up another mic if the existing one isn't working the best. And uh, Dan, uh, Debbie asked if the Syracuse branch is set up with Panopto in their classrooms. Yes. Uh, I don't know if all the rooms are, but I know that the majority are. I, I know that we've set up um, cameras in the rooms down at the Metro, uh, the, Metro so the Syracuse branch. So. Yes. I'll chime into that it's worth getting the audio like set up and like figuring it out so that you get good captions. <laughs> yeah, that was a big deal. So the clearer you speak, the better your caption file is going to be. Problem. Um, yeah, I think that about covers everything. Um, let me talk a little bit about this is day seven of our uh, accessibility, our 10 day accessibility challenge. And today is kind of our, our captioning day. Um, we're gonna have a session at from two to 2.50 this afternoon. Um, if you wanna drop in, uh, we can help you, um, you know, work with captioning files or any other accessibility issues you have going on. Um, feel free to drop in and See, today's the 20th, so um, Rebecca has a session coming up about inclusive virtual meetings and events. And then tomorrow we have our accessibility fellows doing a couple presentations. And we have Carol and Steve doing um, talking about workflows. Um, Carol will be talking about Zoom and Steve will be talking about Panopto. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, uh, Rebecca and Kate will be talking about accessibility checkers. So if you haven't signed up for those or uh, want to check them out, uh, please do. And one more plug for the accessibility website. And also, if you have any issues with uh, captioning, like if you, you know, there, you still have questions afterwards from this, uh, let's see. If you go to the tutorial section and so right here under the written and video tutorials there's a pre-recorded video content. Um, there's a Panopto section that talks about um, how everything that I talked about today, um, how it generates and how to edit them. So these links go to support articles that kind of give you in-depth uh, information about it. So 
So the captioning stuff we went over is in there and along with everything else that's being covered during the 10 day challenge. Um, there's lots of great um, uh, tutorials in here. So make sure you check that out. And I think that's it. Thanks, Dan. Are you gonna be in the um, office hours this afternoon? Yes, um, Laura couldn't make it. So I uh, talked to Kathy and she's gonna join me. So excellent. Uh, Kathy Dutton and I will be working on the uh, the support hours today at two o'clock. All right, look forward to see people there. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Thanks everyone for attending today.